This is the Small Mouth Crush Podcast Season 2. If you're a hardcore angler, you've come to the right place. This podcast that will interview some of the top local and regional anglers in North America. Anglers who consistently finish near the top in both largemouth and smallmouth bass fishing tournaments. Travis and his guest will discuss techniques and strategies used to help these anglers stay so consistent and help you become a better angler and gain an edge on your body of water. And now, here's your host of the Smallmouth Crush Podcast, Travis Manson. Hello, welcome to the Smallmouth Crush Podcast. My name is Travis Manson. Another exciting week talking with some of the top local and regional pros from all over the country. We're getting a wide variety of different anglers. Everyone's got their own strengths and ways that they fish across this country, whether it be largemouth, spotted bass, smallmouth, a little bit of everything. Uh, for season two this year. And I'm really excited. I say that all the time. I'm always excited because I'm always learning. I'm taking notes and my wallet's still feeling it into season two. Every time these guys come on and start talking about baits, the good news is I get to grab all the baits before you guys, since we, uh, since sometimes we tape these a few weeks ahead of time, I can sneak in there and, uh, and grab the goodies, but it's always an interesting approach learning about all the different techniques that are out there so i'm excited to get into the next so i'm excited to get to our next guest but before we go there we got to talk about of course the real shot you guys know the real shot's been with us it's my go-to shop when it comes to anything and everything bass fishing related a lot of different baits whether it be kai tech yozuri mega bass evergreen you guys know the drill by now z-man berkeley rapala they got it all st croix rods shimano Daiwa reels Head on over to therealshot.com. Use my code. So if you've never shopped on The Real Shot before, you can use the code SMALLMOUTHCRUSH15, and you're basically going to get 15% off your first order, which is a pretty cool deal. For those that have shopped at The Real Shot before, if you check out the description below, I might have a code for you as well uh, to utilize and take advantage of as well. So, well, let's bring on this week's guest. Scott, how are you doing? I'm doing good, man. How are you? Good. Everyone's got their own little take when it comes to fishing, and you certainly have the track record to prove that. Unbelievable, really. I mean, you've done some damage out there, and it's pretty exciting being able to. I'm going to try to get in your pick your brain a little bit, and find out what makes you so successful, as well as some of the different techniques that you utilize on a, a regular basis. But before we get into all that, Scott, if you could take a moment just to give us a little bit of introduction, a little bit of background about yourself some of your home bodies of water that you fish and, and what you got going on. My home lakes, actually, I live on Lake Norman. So if you know anything about Lake Norman and uh, pretty much this region, I mean, probably Norman, Wiley, High Rock, Kerr, Carr, Kerr, whatever you call it. I mean, some right. big, different regions call it different things. But yeah, that's supposed to, you know, I grew up in Charlotte, North Carolina. And then, uh, like I said, I live in Denver, North Carolina now, which is on Lake Norman. And uh, that's pretty much it. I mean, I've been fishing probably competitively probably since the mid to later 90s. Okay. And, yeah. uh, I mean, been pretty successful at it. But, and I, you know, I've, I've actually fished the tour, uh, FLW, FLW tour for a while, but it's like I never, I never really had this uh, sponsorship and everything. You, yeah. you try to get out there and do that on your own money. It's it's a whole different beast. Now, and you know, back when I was doing that, I don't, I don't really think I was prepared for that. So, right, right. But, do you have a desire to possibly fish at a higher level? Well, I mean, if, I, if I had the sponsorship, I would probably. I think I could do decent out there. Uh, but like you say, if you, if you don't have the sponsorship, that's a that's a pipe dream because very tough. It just, it's just hard to do it on winnings alone. I mean, you can actually win more money fishing locally. So, and that's kind of the way I look at it. I, yeah, I think you have done well locally. Talk to me a little bit about that. So, you, you're close to Lake Norman or you live on the lake? I actually live across the street. My mom and dad live across from me. They live on the lake. So, I've actually got lake access. So, I grew up fishing Norman. And if you know, if you grew up fishing Norman, you are better be a good dock fisherman. So, that's, that's kind of probably my forte. I mean, there's a lot of other things I do do, but probably the, what I'm best at would be fishing docks. When you so. see the tournament schedule come out and you look at all the different bodies of water, do you get out of your region a little bit or do you really focus right there locally? I mean, I fish I fish some of the bigger stuff too. I mean, we 
we fished bass opens. We're, we're not doing that this year. We're going to fish actually fish the uh, Toyota Central Division this year because mm -hmm. I like the schedule better, mainly because of, you know, they're going to Chickamauga, and I've been there a couple of times and fished real big tournaments and finished top 10 both times. And it kind of sets up for my type fishing. So, you know, do that. But, yeah, I look at the schedule, and we, mm -hmm. we try to plan around it to the ones that we think we could probably win. How are you – preparing for these events well around here down here it's it's, it's never stops man i mean uh, the winter times uh they have a local winter tournaments here and i mean it's it's full of big time sticks i mean you better be able to catch them so i mean you you can go down the list who lives around here and you, and if you know anything about the area this there's this is this is a tough area but it's that, like i said it starts it starts it's, like i said it never stops so I'll look at the schedule like usually around things really get kicked off around here late February. The the bigger stuff like the BFLs, the ABAs, mm -hmm. stuff like that. So usually it starts out you're fishing the winter. You know, your first one or two of them will probably be kind of winter fishing. Then it kind of evolves over to where you, I mean, catch a lot of them on shooter jigs. That's what pretty popular with around here is the shooter jigs and we're pretty uh that's what we do so ah we're gonna have to talk a little bit about that for sure i mean how many events do you fish oh in a year <laughs> i would say it's it's something every weekend yeah except maybe it gets slow in july and august other than that it's pretty much every weekend so you really just you're dialed in because you're out there every all the time uh, i mean yeah and, and it's you know it's different lakes i mean Mm -hmm. you know your bfls you've you got usually the bfls around here they go the the north carolina division which is the one i mostly fish they go to norman wiley kerr high rock that's the mainly the ones they go to and that's it's just they mix the schedule up different years and mm -hmm. i've been lucky enough i've won one on all four of those so i'm kind of wow. proud of that so Makes you a little more versatile if you feel like you've won on everybody. Yeah, or right, say. To. Sure, so, sure. And it's hard to win a BFL around here because you, man, you got man, you got sticks around here. Man, I don't know if you know about the area, but it's mm -hmm. it's tough fishing around here. Let's say there was a big open on Lake Norman in the future, and a guy like me or a guy that's traveling halfway across the country, how do we compete against guys like you? I mean, you know what I mean? Like, really, it's it's tough. It's tough. Well, it, it also counts on the time of year. I mean, if they come in the fall, I mean, I think out, people coming from the outside has got good chances because in the fall it's a little different. I mean, if you come in if you come in May, I don't think you're going to be the locals here in May. And why is that? What makes it? Well, uh, for one thing, the, the shad spawn, and they spawn in uh, April and May, and they suspend, and the guys that know how to catch them, when they suspend around boat docks and stuff, they're they're going to clean your clock. Hmm. That's that's pretty much it. And it, I mean, I, that's if 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 it was ideal for me for it to come, I would pray for it to come late April first of May. So I think I would have the big advantage that so time. Late spring. Yeah, late spring. Yep. And that's that's what gets you going. You mentioned boat docks. You, you mentioned jigs. You you mentioned shad spawn and and suspended fish and things like that i mean there's a lot going on so i don't even know gosh my mind's just spinning i don't even know where we would start with something like that but let's talk about your favorite technique during that time of the year so late it's, spring what are the these lake. fish doing uh that would that would probably be like swimming a jig that's that's pretty much how we a lot, a lot of times we catch the winter suspended you know there's only about two ways you're gonna fish it on the bottom or you're gonna swim it so Usually that time of year, you're going to swim it because they suspend. They're not on the bottom. They're going to suspend because basically the shad spawn around here, uh, they do spawn on rocks, but uh, most of the time they spawn on boat docks. They spawn on, on the hard floats on the boat docks. So for those that are not familiar with like, say, take Norman, for instance, the docks, I assume most of them are floating. Is there any stationary docks as well? Oh, they're, all, or... they're all stationary, but they have floats. I mean, they're, they're, okay. you know, they're stationary docks, pole docks. You know, yeah. some lakes like, say, Kerr, uh, Car Kerr, that those, all that has is floating docks. They're, and they have ropes that hold them to the bank because they, because it fluctuates and they have to move them in and out. They don't allow them to have pole docks. Hmm. Norman's, everybody's got pole, there's all pole docks. So you, okay. you know, you got a platform. You, 
you got walkways, and then you got you, most of the people, they have a float. So that's that's usually where the shad is spawning. They're spawning on the hard surfaces of the floats and the boats. So you can pull in a place and they're spawning and it's just like, it's just on fire. There's just bait flipping everywhere in the, in, on the boat docks. And those fish, those fish, they, they, they tune in on that and they're, and they'll get up under those docks and they'll hang, they'll hang on the docks pretty much all day like that. When does the time get right? Is it water temp that makes these shad start to spawn? I think shad spawn when the water temp gets somewhere low, 70 or low 70s i think that's when it starts spawning i'm not sure the exact temperature but that usually what turns it on and then you're just running docks are you looking for anything specific are you looking for you know i'm, I'm thinking there's a lot of different points back bays main river is there something in particular that you really well, focus I mean, on no i mean you you can catch them anywhere i mean i've caught them in back in the creeks i'll call them on the main lake it's not it's you just have to find you just have to find the areas that they're spawning. I mean, you, you know, I mean, you do you do your homework, get out there and practice. If you're out there early, you're gonna see them spawning. Right. And it does a lot of telltale signs. I mean, you see birds standing on the docks, you know which docks the shack because they're sitting there just picking the, the shad off when they're flipping mm -hmm. up, you know. So and then I've actually been in places where fish are just blowing, blowing the bait up on the on the floats, you know. So that that'll key you in. It's you just have to have you have you have your eye open and be looking, be uh, aware of what's going on. So when you find this activity, you're you're going to target them a little bit with a swimming jig. What what type is what well, type swim, of you can swim jig if the waters if the water's a little bit dirtier. Sometimes just sometimes chatterbait and uh, sometimes spinnerbait. It's just you know you, you alternate between certain things. Probably my my favorite would be the jig, the shooter jig, and then. Uh, you did, like I say, you just you're just swimming it, and then you get and you, it's 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 a it's it's a it's crazy. I mean, the guys around here are good, man. You ain't gonna you said you, you ain't an outsider that don't know nothing about this. They're not just gonna roll up in here and beat these guys, doctors. sure, because that's yeah. all they do. I mean, that's all we do. I mean, yeah. my uh, the way I look at it is, how many times you ever won a tournament that you wasn't doing something that was your strength? Sure. You go out, you go yeah. to other, these other lakes and people tell you, or oh, this, you need to do this. You need to do that. Well, if you've never done that, man, you, you go to that lake, you're going to get, you're going to get <laughs> yeah. tail handed to you. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I keep it simple. I try to do what I do. There's, I don't know, four or five different things, you know, it changes throughout the year, but I try to keep it what I'm good at and don't try to get too technical with it. And don't try to listen to too much doc talk. Cause that'll, right. that'll get you to when you see a shad spawn going on, it's a specific doc. Looking back over the last couple of years, is it typically the same type of doc, same area that you can kind of go back to year after year? Do you notice that kind of changes in every year is different? Yeah, like sometimes. you have your favorite little man. Yeah, I know oh, the yeah. shad oh, spawn's yeah. going yeah, on. I need to go check. I mean, yeah. you definitely have that. I mean, you have your favorite areas. I mean, I think it's a lot to do with the kind of floats too. Like you, you want the hard, they have to have something hard to, but they will, they will spawn on boats too. The in the boats is in the slips. It's, I can't say there's a certain one dock that you're looking for. Like I say, you just kind of have to put your time in. Sometimes they'll be they're like the ones out there over deeper water. If that makes any sense. Yeah. Talk to me a little bit about the shooter jig. Describe that for people that aren't familiar with it. As well, well as some of the different styles. Hand -tied jig. And, it's hand tied and the, yeah. you know, hand tied jigs, Pretty much a lot better, especially skipping jigs, because you ain't got to worry about your skirt coming down. You know, with the people, the, the rubber band jigs, they're not near as good. Uh, buddy of mine, Louis Hall, he's the one who owns uh, Shooter Lures, and he's he's been making jigs for years and years and years, and he's one of my sponsors, and he takes care of me. That I think it's the best jig around. And so, for that application, what sizes are you normally I'm a, using? If I'm, if I'm gonna swim it, I'm gonna swim a three eighths, because uh -huh. I don't want it to sink real quick. Sure. And if I'm going to fish it on the bottom, I'm using a half ounce. That's okay. pretty much all I use. Those two half ounce, three eighths. What are some of your colors you really kind of gravitate towards? Well, we have a special color that he makes. He don't really sell. He just makes it for us. So uh -huh. I don't know if I want to tell that color, but it, it, I, give us I a mean, hint. Give us a hint. It's a crawdad kind of color. I mean, it, it's it's imitating. The you know, there's two things a fish going to think of jig. They're going to think it's a crawdad. Or, but mostly on boat docks, they they thinking it's a brim. So more of a brim crawdad looking, a greenish color. That's that's a brim color. Mm -hmm. I think that's better on the docks. 
anytime if you know anything about dock fishing, you pull up in a place and you start seeing a lot of brim suspended on the docks. That's the ones you're gonna get bit on, and that's what they're eating. They're eating brim, and you'll. I mean, they do eat crawdads too, but they're more on, on rocks, you know, crawdads. What's your go-to jig trailer in that situation? I, I mean, I usually mostly just use two. I you uh I use a big salty uh zoom chunk if you know what that is big salty mm -hmm. and then i'll use the super super chunk uh which is it's got the long flap floppy tails i can right. call them i guess they call them mule ears or whatever gotcha. but that's the two i use mostly so once the spawns over the shad spawn that is and the fish are starting to move around i'm, I'm assuming a lot go deep as well what is your what's your game plan in that summertime deal? You, you mentioned you don't have a whole lot of events July and August, but I'm sure there's a few that you that you fish. What what would be your well uh, I guess pattern I that say, you look I for? Say we'll probably fish a little bit deeper, and then uh, we'll go to finesse fishing, shaky head, Ned rig, uh, drop shot stuff like that, and that works out real well. And you'll catch a lot of you'll catch a lot of big fish on them. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's some days you there's some days you come out here and you on uh, Norman you can catch 50, 60 a day on that kind of stuff. Ninety percent of the tournaments on Norman's one four foot or less. I mean, if you get wow. if, if you're if you come to Norman and you think you're going to win deep, usually it's, it's hard to win deep. I mean, okay. Ryan okay. Thrift he does it sometimes. He's but he's free, he's real good at that. But mo most of the time, tournaments around here is one shallow. Up shallow on the docks. Yeah, big magnum wow. spots. I mean, they they breed with the largemouth. They get there's a lot of three and a half, four pound spots in Lake Norman. And that's what you that's what you're targeting. So doing well in all these events over the years, you got to have a couple that just kind of really stand out. Can you uh, take me back to a couple of those events that were real special to you and kind of take us on a journey and how everything went down and what okay, led up well, to that uh, event. We won. Uh, I don't know if you know the Carolina Bass Challenge. Have you ever heard of that? CBC? I have. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we won the championship in that. It was at Lake Wiley. It's kind of a tough road to get there. I was fishing the opens that year, and the uh, only way we could qualify, you had to get so many tournaments in. The only way we could qualify was fish the South, the South Carolina side, which we don't usually fish. Okay. Now, because it conflicted with too much stuff I was fishing. Yep. So actually one of them, I had to fish the open at Toho. We ends Friday, had to drive to Lake Murray, get there about three 30 in the morning and for, get up and fish the Murray. first day of the tournament. Yeah. Wow. And I was pretty much spent. So we didn't really do good. So we, I'm only think we fished, but a few hours, but anyway, we got our tournament in and that qualified yep. us for the term. What a, what a championship. Uh, was at Wiley, and the first day it uh, poured rain all day, and it never got out of the low 40s. And you know what kind of day that is. Yeah. I mean, I was I had waterproof boots on, and at the end of the day, I took them off and poured water out of them. And, you know, <laughs> sure. 40, 42, 41 degree and pouring rain all day, it was brutal. And I, I really didn't – I mean, we barely made it because my partner, he was wanting to leave at 1 o'clock, and we only had four. It was tough as nails. And I okay. Was like, Man, we get one more. We – we'll be all right you know so finally he kept griping he wanted to leave because he was freezing <laughs> i mean it was about it was brutal i mean a lot of people left and sure and i said i said well let's just, let's go over here at this one spot we always catch one no matter how tough it is i said if we catch one we're gonna we're gonna go weigh them so we go over there and yep. lo and behold we caught a three pounder give us 11 something and i'm like we gotta go he said well let's go weigh him and it had an hour and a half to go so we went in an hour and a half early and weighed them right so the second day we kind of had a game plan because it was going to – it rained so much, the lake was going to flood up. So we changed the game plan, and we went for suspended fish. And there wasn't nobody else doing that, and we ended up catching the biggest bag, and we ended up coming back and winning the $50,000. Wow. And, you know, we made the right adjustment. That's and that's what fishing is all about, man. You got to make – everybody can catch a fish. Yeah. Fishing, fishing tur winning tournaments is all about decision-making. You know, you know what I mean. So you, make these, right, you gotta make that right decision at the right time. And we did that day. So we won that fifty thousand dollars. It was a tough wow. road to get there, but we got it. So that's pretty cool. So the decision to go after the, the suspended fish, what made you do that? And why weren't other anglers keyed in on that? Well, there was there was there was a couple of locals in that one that I knew was catching them, but they were catching them way up the river. And I knew all the rain and the water flooded up too 
probably two, two and a half feet overnight. And I knew that where they was catching them was done. So I wasn't worried about them anymore. And yeah. we, we just made it, we just made a decision that, that flooded up so much that we just didn't think we was going to get bit on the bank. And we was right. It was tough. Nobody hardly caught nothing. And we ended up catching 15 something that day, which was a real good bag for them mm-hmm. in the fall. And we just made, like I said, we just made the right decision. Yeah. In your mind, what makes you so successful and the reason behind all that? I think the main reason that I'm successful is I fish my strengths. I know a lot of guys, I mean, I'm not going to mention names. They they get out there and they fish on the road, and some of them's pro fishermen. But they listen to too many people, man. They get too much. They get they listen. There'll they'll be three, four, five of the anglers that they're fishing against. I call them every night and give them, tell them this and tell them that. Don't, I mean, I'm not going to listen to that. I'm going to stick to my strengths. If I go to a lake, I'm first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to look, I'm going to look, I'm going to say, I'm going to go try this. This is what, this is what I'm good at. If they're doing this, I know I'm going to do good if they're doing what I want them to do. I mean, I've fished tournaments. I mean, hundreds of tournaments, I've won hundreds of tournaments over the years. Right. But I mean, I so for an example, uh, Kerr Lake, we've won the, the uh, cat championship up there. They've, they've had, We've won it twice. We fished it three times and we've won it twice. The one time, one time we went up there, hands down, I knew we was going to win it for it started. It's a two day tournament. I knew we uh-huh. were going to win it for it started. I mean, we got up there, we practiced two hours, had 18 pounds in two hours, which is a bag up there. Sure. And I knew what we was doing, nobody else was going to be doing. And I knew that we, I knew it would last two days. And we did. We caught it. We really caught them and we won that one. So, wow. like you say, you just, you, you fish your strengths, you find out what you're good at and you roll with that. That's why I, that's how I look at it. So let's, let's take you like a total different area in the country and you show up to a lake that let's say you haven't been on. I'm assuming this is the type of advice you're saying. So because you love fishing docks and you, you're comfortable with that, that's going to be a pattern or an area that you're going to look at first. That's going to be right? probably, that's going to be right up in the top three I'm, things I'm going to look at. Okay. If there's docks on that lake, you a lot of times, a lot of times these boys, these guys that live down here, they'll go up north and fish these guys. They don't stand. They they go in to catch them on those lakes because they don't fish docks. They got them all to themselves. So yeah, a lot of guys right. do that. I mean, and you know, a lot of times those smallmouth lakes, you usually can't win on docks because you can't get enough big fish to win. Mm-hmm. But you can do good a lot of times on docks. And like I said, that's gonna be the first thing I'm gonna look at. And if I know if I start getting bit on boat docks, it's 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 gonna be in my house then because I mean I know I can catch them then probably pretty good. Just in the past, I can I can think of some times where I I fish lakes and I'm not familiar with like say Kentucky Lake and it was in the fall and everybody's saying how you have to get up on these shallow bars and throw you know top waters and and try to find these schooling fish and here I was struggling because I couldn't get it done like everyone else is supposedly doing on that lake. And I picked up a drop shot and looked for something that kind of reminded me like home and I was able to put together a bag. So I totally agree. I think that's some of the best advice staying away from the doc talk. It's hard. I know because you want to know, but at the same time, you really don't, right? It just gets you. The only thing thing I usually want to know is I want to know what's winning tournaments there. Okay. I'm going to look, I'm going to look at docks. I'm going to look at top water. I'm real good at top water fishing. I love that. And, can't do real good at that and so i'm gonna look i'm gonna look at that it just you know and then it counts on what time of year it is mm-hmm, mm-hmm. i mean and like the dock fish i'll give you an example we've uh i fished a regional bfl regional fort loudon it's in tennessee never been there in my life so it's full of boat docks right so i practiced and i found them on some boat docks and i, I said well i'll probably do pretty good and it was so tough I mean, you wouldn't believe how tough it was nobody caught nothing really so I found one dock in boat practice. I didn't get, I didn't get bit off the dock, I'm, but I seen the dock. I know docks. I'm like, I will get a good one off this dock. I mean, I knew it. I mean, I knew it. It had, it had brim under it. It had a bunch of poles. It was sitting in the right place. It was sitting up on a flat. I knew I was going to get bit on it. So first day I go out, I fished it the first, I fished that dock the first day I didn't get bit. Mm-hmm. And I went on to the rest of the other places. I found them on top water. I caught some on top water and I caught some on boat docks. 
So I come back and I got like 11 and a half pounds. Well, I had a three pound lead the first day. That's how bad that place was. Jeez. So the second day I go back and I go back to that dock and I knew I was going to get bit on. Right. Fired a shooter jig up in there. Got a six pounder. Wow. So that kept me in the lead the second day. Right. Just right. because I found that dock and I, ne I did not get a bite on it in practice, but I knew just from experience, I was going to get bit on that dock. Making the right decisions and having the confidence. I mean, really? That's what that was all that whole story. I mean, yep. locating the dock, understanding how it's set up. I feel like I got to ask you more questions when it comes to this. I, 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 it's just incredible being able to have that type of experience. I guess I assume that comes with being on the water and being out there and dealing with that type of technique all the time. Well, I like, like both docks. I mean, these guys right here is tough, man. You got to be able to, I mean, you got to be able to throw a jig four or five foot up on our dock in a, like a six inch hole, you know, and you got to get, yeah. once you, if you get real good, you got to, you've got to outcast these guys. If you're going to beat them really a lot of times. Accurate cast. And I feel like I'm, I mean, I feel like I've got, I don't, uh, I'm good buddies with Andy Montgomery. He's, yeah. he's a heck of a caster. He roll cast. If you know, roll cast, you're, you're roll casting, mm -hmm. you know, skipping it. Okay. Well, I, I side skip it like this. So sure. uh, Andy calls it the uh, skip flipping. He said uh -huh. he calls it skip flipping. So, or flip skipping. Oh, flip I skipping. Think. But yeah, so that's what I do. And I mean, I'm real good at it. And you and I, I fish tighter to docks than a lot of people. A lot of people, when you roll cast, you have to get back from the dock. Okay. You got to get that wind up and, you know, you can't, you can't be close to the dock and, and roll cast it under a dock. You'd be banging, you know, you can't control your bait. But the the flip skipping fish tighter to docks. So we're a little bit closer. You got a better hookup ratio because you're way back from something. A lot of times you don't get the hook in the fish. Are and people you, think, well, you, they say, you, man, you fish too close to them docks. Well, I mean, it works. I mean, they, the, you don't, you don't spook them. those fish are comfortable when they're under there. They really can't see you. As long as they can't see you, they're pretty comfortable and they'll bite if you get it on them. So I was going to ask you, I assume you try to be as quiet as possible, but you're not afraid to get up there. No, no, we get, I mean, we get close. I mean, we probably stay three or four foot off the dock most of the time. How quickly are you hitting the key spots and what are you looking for? What oh, are like the key three, spots? three or four casts on one dock and going to then going to another one to what you feel is probably the best area of the dock. That's right. And then and, and a lot of times, a lot of times, it's, <laughs> you, you say that you a lot of times you're not fishing a row of docks. You, you run, you fish that one dock, make three or four casts, crank the boat up, and you go off to the next one. So uh, it's a tiring day, man. And people, yeah. Think, People think fishing ain't work. I guarantee you come a day do that all day and see what come talk to me about it. How many times that trolling motor coming up and down throughout a day? Man, in a day, <laughs> I, I'd say 40, 50 times a day. Wow. So you're you're sitting down, making some casts, pulling up and going. I mean, it's crazy. And it's that's fascinating. What you got, I mean, that's what you have to do to compete. I'm not no I'm not a patient kind of guy. I don't like to sit in one place in this. Florida's always been bad for me because those guys they'll they'll power pull the boat down and make the same cast all day. Yeah. I, I, I've witnessed it for years. I've known that, and I and I and I've made myself slow down, slow down. So the last time I was down there and fished the open, it was at uh, Harris Chain. So I knew I was around the guys that was leading because I've seen them. I mean, I know I'm there, and I'm fishing. Yeah. I'm creeping around with the trolling motor. I'm I got it on low, just barely making a bunch of casts. And then I realized, man, these guys ain't even using the trolling motor. They're <laughs> locked down, making the same cast yeah. all day and never move. It's it's unreal, man. I just don't, I don't. I'm bad with that. I got patience for that. So, I, I was going to ask, you know, all the success you've had when it comes to tournament fishing. Is there any weaknesses? Is there any areas that you wish you could improve upon? And maybe that's <laughs> maybe one of them. The, having the patience. Patience, yeah. Like How about bed, a technique that I you just? Fish and I don't, I, I don't have the patience. I mean, I can bed fish, I can catch them off the bed, but man, it's hard for me to do that. Is it? Yeah. Because, especially on a lake, lake you know, because you're sitting there fishing. Sometimes it takes you an hour to catch one. You're thinking, man, I got this place and this place, I can go catch one, and you're sitting there trying to catch that. And then if you don't get it to bite, or you hook it and it gets off, oh man, that's right. Soft. How about yeah. like one of your least favorite techniques? Like if if you know it's working, but you got to do it. Do you have anything like that? Where you're like, oh man. Hmm. This ain't fun, but I'll do it. 
I mean, I'm probably dragging a Carolina rig or something, some, some kind of technique yeah. like that. Sure. I, I, I despise that. Not your style. I won't do it unless I – I mean, it, I'd have to be guaranteed I know I'm going to catch him to do it. Right, so, right. Yeah. Run and gun in as many docks as you can. That's the uh, – and Fisher's strengths. That's kind of the takeaway uh, from this podcast for sure. I, I There's so I much mean, that, yeah, that way with anything. It's that way with anything. It's top water. It's like you – Yeah. You you got a, a twenty yard stretch. You go hit that twenty yard stretch. Jerk the trolling motor up and go to the next spot. Hit that spot. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of, and some of it it might be a three cast spot. I mean, you're just you got to fish your strengths and cover water. I saw. I mean, Kevin Van Dam. He's a pretty. He fishes like he fishes fast like that. Most of the anglers that you compete against the local side. Do you see similarities on how you guys dominate, or is there a certain technique or an approach that another angler like yourself that you know when you show up to a an event you you know you're gonna have what eight nine ten guys that you're gonna be battling against that day yeah I'm just it's, guessing it's, right it's like that i mean you got uh like i said there's a lot of sticks around here man you got i mean i don't want to name them all off i don't want to leave nobody out <laughs> right get your bass master classic back-to-back -back yeah. champion fish against him every week and then sure. uh, you got Brian Thrift, fish against him. I talk a lot of trash to him. You don't tell right. him I'm a lot better than he is, but don't tell him <laughs> I said that. But no, nah, he's a good guy. And Robbie Dye, he's one of my best friends. We 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 stay talking trash a lot. You sure. know, it's a, it's this as there's a crowd around here. I'm telling you, Matt Airy, you got uh yeah, man. I Todd Alton, he's a friend of mine. I mean, it's just sure there's a bunch of them, man. So you better bring your A game around here. That's for sure. Speaking of A game and, and and fishing against all these big sticks over the years and winning as much events that you've won, what is it? Is it the competition? Is it the fact that you know what drives you to to continue and, and fish a tournament every weekend and put in, Man, in that just, kind of work? The, it's just the competition. I mean, yeah. I used to play basketball when I was young, and that's all I wanted to do. We we'd run around, get in tournaments, play basketball all the time. <laughs> some point you get a little too old for that so sure it's, it's kind of taking over with the fishing so it's this competition i mean i like to beat them man and i like right. it and then we and you know there's a lot of trash talk going around around oh, yeah. here so we like it's, to sell each it other sounds about. like a great group of guys i mean to fish against not only are they all good sticks but that's a heck of a crew you named off there oh i mean i can go a little <laughs> deeper than that there's a whole bunch of them that's why i say i don't yeah. want to name them all i don't want to feel like sure. i'm leaving nobody out but this right. there's a there's a there's a group around here, I can promise you. So I always ask our guests on the podcast, I'd love to know your personal best, whether it be a smallmouth, largemouth, spotted bass, just a memorable PB. Around here, you don't see you don't catch a lot of real big fish. Yeah. Yeah. I think Norman, if you catch a if you catch a seven pounder, man, you, you that's that's a monster at Lake Norman. You catch mm -hmm. fives, you know, you catch a lot of fives, fours. So my personal best at Norman's probably about a seven something. Okay. Low yeah. seven. Uh, personal best all together is probably a nine and a half at uh, at uh, Santee. Santee, yeah. But like I said, you don't you don't get double digit weights around here much unless you go to you know maybe the Jordan Sharon Hare somewhere mid state over there. But we don't fish over there a lot. Kerr's the one I fish the most far off, and uh, you don't see ten pounders come out of there either. That's, that's more of a four and five pound lake. Sure. And of course, I always ask. If you had one bait to use the rest of the season, what would that be? And I think I already know it's going to be a shooter jig, and you're going to be doing your thing on the dock. Yeah, well, That's I mean, it's so, it's so versatile, man. And you, I mean, you can swim it, and you can you can drag it, and you can, you know, it's real versatile. Uh, I mean, you can do everything with it, but fish top water. So, yeah, yeah. That's, but I mean, I'd hate to have to only just have a jig though, because there's a lot. I of time, know, a lot I of know. Time, like winter time. A lot of people fish a jig in wintertime. We don't. We don't fool with the jig in wintertime. What are you using in cold water most cold, of the time? In cold water, uh, well, this right here. The, a rig. Yes. The Shane's Bait A rig. We use the nine rig, which is irritating to throw all day. So that's the know, nine? This is the nine rig. Yep. Uh, the Blades of Glory. This is the, bla the Blades of Glory with the blades on the back. I like the blades on the back because it keeps the, keeps the bait more more weight to the back when you cast it and it don't mess up as bad. Mm -hmm. And I'll take the uh, two point, I guess that's a 2.8. That's a small contact. 
Yeah. And I'll rig it on the front weedless with the weedless hooks. And that, and that saves you a lot of headache from it wrapping up and getting hung up. Okay. And then I'll take the back, the 3.3s, and I'll, and, I'll, and I'll rig them with the hook out. So, and that's that's pretty much my setup on that. And I, I usually throw, most people throw it on braid, man. I yeah, I was going to ask you, are you floor or braid? No, I'm, I'm going to tell you, I throw it on 25-pound mono. Really? I want the big line, and I don't care about the little bit of stretch because when they eat this thing, they're hooked. And, you know, another thing about the A-Rig people, they all want to throw it on 7.6 heavy rods. Why would you want to fool with a 7.6 heavy rod throwing that thing all day? I mean, yeah, maybe if you was, if you was fishing deep somewhere and you wanted to make one crazy long cast or something. But, man, if you're throwing it, if you target casting that thing and you're throwing a 7.6 rod, man, sure. you're, you're going to be over at the uh, – getting your joints worked on pretty regular. So you're like trying to put that, you're trying to run that a rig tight to cover, find brush, fish it around brush. brush. Yeah. You'll see the fish. So but what's the, what's, what's your rod choice? What's your action? I use a, I use a, I use a seven foot medium heavy is all I use. And I what's, just rig it up with a what? Uh, lose. I use, okay. I, I put the seven to one. Yeah. And I ain't, I'm not real big on rod speeds. I, I, I get most of all of, I mean, real speeds. I sure. get most of all of them fast. Yeah. I mean, cause yeah. I figure if I want it to go slow, I'm just going to crack it slow. Exactly. I I'm yeah. with you on that, but yeah. you'll have some people argue. That's for sure. Oh yeah. I ain't, I, don't, <laughs> I ain't going with the slow reels. Cause I feel yes. like if I want to use it for something else, that's no good. You exactly. Good I'm else? right there, man. I'm right there. I'm people are trying to talk me into, uh, I, I'm starting to, I used to be all high speed and I still like that concept, but, too much uh well, no, talk. <laughs> an example around here if you're crankbait fishing people people think it's winter time you have to fish a crankbait slow man that you know, ain't true hmm. yeah. i mean you them fish are gonna bite that bait. if they want that bait they're gonna get the water don't get upper 40s is usually as low as it gets around here yeah any fish in that lake wants to run that bait down he'll get it i mean sure and that it, it, it makes them bite when you fish it faster because it deflects off of stuff. And that's when they bite it. Yeah. Uh, I get an example, fished at Lake Murray. Uh, it was in February. I mean, I had, I probably had 20, 20 something pounds and I'm catching them all cranking and I'm cranking that bait real fast. My, well, my co hunger, he ain't had, he ain't got nothing. Right. He ain't catching nothing. And he said, man, I ain't catching nothing, man. We'll, we'll, let me catch one. It's an hour to go. I'm throwing three pounders back. You know, I had 20. Jeez. I had. Tw I think I had 23 pounds at the time. And I'm just throwing three pounders back. You know, I'm catching them. He's like, what What am I? What? What?" I said, well, look. I said, reach in my box. I showed him the bait. I said, tie that one on right there. I had painted it a certain color, you know. Right. And I, said, I said, the reason you're not getting bit, I said, you're fishing it too slow. I said, you got to wind it faster. You want to deflect off stuff. And, and lo and behold, I turned the boat. Cause I'm kind of parallel on the bank, and I say, I say, throw up in front of the boat there. I'll let you throw a couple of times, you know, you catch sure. one, if you can. And he says, "Man, I'm hung," and I see his line start moving. Uh -huh, right. Well, of course, he caught Big an eight one. pounder on oh, the third cast, an eight pounder. So jeez. cost me the tournament. I finished oh in the finish in third. So, but I guess it comes back for me being nice. You're gonna have, like I said, it's slow. You don't I, yeah. that. I ain't. Mean, I'm not a slow fisherman, man. I. I yeah, I I can tell. I can tell. I got I got to circle back on that A rig again. Twenty five pound mono. I throw twenty five pound of uh, K nine. It's it's floor it's 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 uh, floral coated, but it's hybrid. It's, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's it don't have a, it has stretch. It has a lot of stretch to it. Right. I throw it on and I throw it on. Like I said, it's seven foot. Medium heavy, yeah. and that that's going to allow you to be a little bit more accurate with your cast. That's what you yeah, do, yeah. Because right? okay. I mean, that a lot of times that's a lot of times that's the because that thing's hard to cast, man. Mm -hmm. You throw and you throw it on a seven six rod. I'd hate to see you you making real accurate casts on the seven six rod. Yeah. Oh, that's what you have to do. No, you don't put that up. I mean, uh, you think a seven? What's the set? Tell me the advantage in your opinion. What would the advantage be throwing that thing on a seven six rod? I'm just thinking the way I utilize it, it would be more for distance and distance. just launching it out there. Yeah. Over. But you're not a bunch doing of, that. You're not. I mean, fishing around here, you're not doing that. You're you're target yeah. fishing a lot. Yeah. I mean, you're fishing brush piles. You're fishing boat docks. You know, I mean, you are fishing some rocks, but there's your, nowhere nowhere we throw it a long way. What's your typical jig head then size on that? 
I mean, I don't know if you can see it. I don't. I don't even know what size it is. It's just okay. Like, so it's not too big at all. Yeah. Uh, Shane, I was. I was going to say I didn't know if you're running like all three eighths or something. No, no, no. You don't want it. I, we. I don't want heavy weights on there. Right. Yeah. yeah. If I wanted to go down, I'm just going to let it sink and wind it slower. Uh, Shane's baits. He he makes. He he has these hooks made special for this. Okay. You know, you got the you got the wheelless ones. You where you the wheelless one where you screw it on and you run it up into the bait and then you got the ones you just thread it through and I will yep. uh I'll actually I glue them so sure most of the time you'll go through a whole day you won't have to change a bait right with that so that's yeah with the screw so that's lock good. and gluing yeah yeah no yep. I've thrown chains uh a rigs in the past I've done real well on them for for giant smallmouth it's one of my one of my favorite a rigs I kind of got away from it in a few years I'd like to get back to especially a setup like that man that's legit all right Scott I mean I don't even think we scratched the surface I'd like to be uh I'd like to be an observer for a year in your boat, and I still wouldn't know a tiny, even a quarter of what you know when it comes to uh, fishing those lakes down there. It's incredible stuff. I mean, putting your time in, I really like your tips as far as fish your strengths, and obviously uh, you know exactly what your strengths are, and I think that scares a lot of people that are out there competing against <laughs> you. That's for sure. Great they, stuff. Won't get, they won't give you much credit around here. So <laughs> I, 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 hear agree, so. I hear you. Exactly. Well, how can people keep up with what you're doing and, and follow – uh, as far as social media and things like that. Well, we have a podcast we do on Thursdays at seven, uh, Fishing Legends Live. If you want to look it up on Facebook, we've got an Instagram. We're getting getting started on YouTube a little bit. We got a guy working on that. But but like I say, Fishing Legends Live, seven o'clock on Thursdays. Maybe if you're down around sometime, we'll get you on there. Absolutely. I'll uh I'm gonna put that information down in the description, guys, for anyone that wants to check it out. I encourage you to. I've seen in the past you got some crazy guests on at times. It gets a little yeah. We have some big name guys on there a lot. <laughs> that, of time you too. that you do. That you do. Yeah, that and then, then you know I'm sponsored with Mercury Triton, Shane's baits, of course, yes. Shooter Lures. There's a there's a long list of them. I don't want. I probably don't want to go list all of them because I'll, I'll say somebody say I left them out. But good stuff. Well, we we definitely appreciate you taking your time coming on the podcast and wish you the best of luck in the future. All right, man. I appreciate you having me on, man. I really enjoyed it. And maybe we'll awesome. do it again sometime. Absolutely. And as always, guys, until next time, we'll see you on the water. Thanks so much for listening today. Make sure that you're subscribed to the show and follow us on Instagram at Small Mouth Crush. Also, the YouTube channel, Small Mouth Crush. And if you feel so inclined, please leave us a five-star rating and comment with a review below. And as always, until next time, we'll see you on the water.